So we were talking about signals. I told you something about the um, properties and stuff. So let's see, sample signals, aliasing, what is digital signal, example of audio signal, basic fundamental signals like unit impulse or unit step. Uh, periodic signals do exist in, in uh, say, nature, but don't exist in digital systems. Frequency space, okay, just a reminder of, okay, we have the uh, two kind of representations of signals. So it's it's the uh, 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 time space, when you, that's what you see on the oscilloscope. Uh, but then basically frequency space is what you hear. Your hearing is based on frequency. There are these uh, tiny uh, the, the, the devices or what, whatever the sensors are, those uh, Varekar or whatever that is in English, the, the, those uh, tiny antennas which are tuned for each frequency on your ear. That's how you're hearing different frequencies. It's very complex device, but you are not hearing in time space. You are hearing in frequency space. And your brain is actually putting these uh, frequencies in, in time. Okay, that's, that's how you understand things. Okay, so, but, but, but anyways, that, those are the two different sides of the signal. One is the uh, uh, time space, and another one is the frequency space. Nothing more than that. Okay, random signals. So fundamentally, all real signals which have some information is are considered random. Okay, and different distributions. Statics analysis. Okay, correlation. Signals correlate if there is a uh, kind of uh, resemblance of signals at some point. And then convolution. With, in this course, we're actually doing some filters and filtering. So uh, filters basically uh, can modify the spectral components of a signal. But actually, it's nice that we have the convolution so we can do it on time space, since that's how the uh, uh, signals can be handled easily. OK, signal to noise ratio was also there. Uh, so we will do some decibels. I think we are doing some decibel calculations today. <laughs> My favorite. <laughs> How does it go, that decibel? <laughs> mm, yep, spectral analysis, examples, and spectrogram. Good. And now it's time for the lab tutorial. Um, so Basically, what you will be doing is, okay, Pix, down here, there's the exercise one, and which has a deadline of Thursday. I want you to uh, basically return the exercise before I go. So afternoon on Thursday at latest for the first exercise. And the template is right there. If you, if you click it, it opens it up. I'm the owner it of, of this. Uh, and uh, okay, now there's seven, eight other persons have opened it. You can make a copy of that one to your own Google Drive. Don't try to edit this one. I'm not letting you to, to destroy my copy. So copy, make a copy of this one to your own Google Drive, and basically that's how you do it. There's a make a copy or something in Japanese here. <laughs> okay, make a copy, and then you can start editing it. Uh, you might actually rename it so that it's a copy of exercise or exercise one, and then your name on it, or initials, or whatever. Then you may also choose a folder for this one. So on Google Drive, I would 
actually go and make a subdirectory there for this course and put everything there. And it, it actually helps a lot if you just make a subdirectory for each exercise what you are doing. Then you can have the attachment files on the same subdirectory. Okay. So rename or make a copy, rename it and put it on a folder that you can find. Uh, sharing, well, we will worry about the sharing later. And click OK. Uh, and now it's actually this editable copy. Good. First things first, you can work on pairs. So if we have someone who doesn't have any pair, hmm? so three, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Well, nobody have to do it him or herself, so yes. In that case, three persons is okay. Otherwise, no. It, the, the pairing is actually the most efficient way of working on this kind of student exercises. That has been actually proved in some scientific paper back in 80s, 90s, and 2000, and so on. Several times, several times already. Okay, so yeah, uh, don't worry about the group number here. <laughs> uh, but fundamentally, your names, real names. Uh, if you need more, more names here, you can add a row. Okay. You need to return only one of the exercises. So only one exercise per group. Okay. That's some discussion going on, so maybe. Okay, there, and then make a copy. Oh, you're so fast. <laughs> I know you have the Japanese interface. You know that that's the <laughs> So what is the Oh you don't have the Chrome. Ah okay okay. Uh remember now we are working with the Google. So these actually work best if you have Chrome on your computer. If you have some other uh, web browser it doesn't necessarily work as well. For example, editing might not work in all browsers. Use Google Chrome with the Google systems. Okay. So, there are some instructions. Instructions how to work. I hope that I actually uh, Edit this one. Let's see. <laughs> uh, all right. So maybe. All right. So so basically, it says here MATLAB, but it can be also Octave. It has the same similar uh, say interface. Let's go through a couple of things. There's a lot of yada yada yada, yeah, blah blah blah. Okay. First important. I kind of a uh, few years back, actually 15, 16, 17 years ago, I thought about this wonderful system, how to randomize the exercises. I have one single exercise for everyone but to make sure that everyone actually have their own answers, there is a number SSS, which is the last three non-zero digits of your student ID number. Example, this kind of uh, student ID number has 
1234704604. Non zero meaning that you leave the zero out, and then the last three digits is 764. Okay. Now you can figure out your own own SSS number. And where that does the SSS number come from? It was a model, model marking of 19, oh, 2000 and, no, oh, it was 2001 uh, Ducati Super Sport bike. <laughs> it was SSS. They, they, Ducati first came with the model S, then SS, and then the third year they had the uh, SSS. Okay, but anyways, so some, some, that's why they, it has this marking. Okay, so basically, you just use that one if there is a number SSS mark anywhere on the exercise. All right, then the working instructions, starting the MATLAB or, well, in your case, Octave. For each exercise, create a new working directory. Not a bad idea, actually, to put everything on your Google Drive. You just install the Google Drive application in your computer to map the uh, Google Drive, uh, the, the cloud drive, as one of the disks on your computer, and then you can actually start using it. Although it might break at some point, but <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. It's pretty good on, on saving the information as long as you don't turn off the computer. Yes, yes. That, yeah, that's why you have backups if, if something goes wrong. <clears throat> so, and then log into your Google account if you don't have one, but you already have it. So, um, that actually means that using Chrome, log into your Google account with your Gmail, favorite Gmail uh, uh, account. Uh, yeah, that make an editable copy of that we already did. Change the document name, something descriptive that you can find. I don't care about the name of the document. I don't even look at it. Uh, this is for you to find out if, you know, two years from now, then you suddenly need it in work. Whoa, <laughs> scary thought. Um, write your name. Oh, okay, don't worry about the student ID. You don't need to mark that one. Let's delete there. So absolute maximum is three students, but only if there are other number of students present. Okay, then, okay, some of your staff answer the questions on the research spaces, insert required graphs, insert links, okay, save the document, publish your answers, including the attachments, uh, test that it works. Basically, test your link that it opens on uh, the, the uh, Anonymous web browser. Submit the link. So do not send any files, but a link to Google Docs report. So the Google Doc report is the uh, same as the template. If there are mistakes, yeah, 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 yeah. well. Um, I will go through that one with an example. And all the exercises must be submitted in order to get the final grade. So remember, five exercises compulsory. And then about what happens if you don't hear anything from us or from me. Well, if there's nothing to say and the grade is OK, then I just mark the grade. You can see it from the score table. I haven't checked that yet. That's usually the thing if you don't hear anything from me. Uh, okay, that's the nasty stuff. Don't copy directly from the others. Since usually the person you, you are copying the answers has no clue what he or she has been doing and you're copying the errors. That's I recognize the, uh, you know, copies. They are same mistakes. <laughs> 
Now, if the, if the answers are correct, usually the correct answers differ a little bit in these exercises. But if those are identical, usually it's the case that both are totally wrong. <laughs> okay, so, but cooperation is actually something you should do. So if you are not totally sure if, if you have a correct answer or not, talk to some other group and compare notes and do, but anyways, do your own stuff, but compare the notes and, and uh, basically discuss about the, uh, this, how did you do the solution for this problem? So basically, you know, co cooperate. Good. Um, all right, so back to this exercise template. Okay. That one. So, um, so basically these are the, this is the table which you should be filling. There's a number, usually uh, 10 different exercises from one to 10. This is just number zero for, for example row. And uh, basically you should use that yellow space to, uh, for your answer. And I basically give you a hint what to give here. So write the comments, how to do whatever I'm asking here. All right. In some parts, I ask you to insert the figure. Good. So uh, we'll go through how to actually uh, make hard copy of the, the uh, figures and how to publish those. That's actually very simple on, on the Google Docs. Um, yeah, writing comments. Okay, and then, okay, we are also doing some sound samples. Okay, good. So, yeah. So, today's exercise is basically the fundamentals, meaning how to make the uh, region of indexes, uh, how to generate uh, the, the impulse function, step function, sampled functions, how to represent those, how to generate data sequences again and again, and then the sound. Okay, that sounds fun. Good. So, please start the uh, octave. Now it's the time to start the octave, so. Uh, where do I have my up there? And in Octave, actually, you should start the graphical user interface, GUI, not the uh, the other one. Okay. Hmm. Wait a minute. Just a moment. I have some. Technical difficulties here. Hmm. How come it? There. Get it. So. Um, have you used Octave before? Anyone who hasn't used Octave at all? Okay. About half and half. MATLAB? No. Not even MATLAB! <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It's not Ihan Kadet. Okay, yes! <laughs> More to learn. Um, when you start the octave, it looks like that. Did you already download it, by the way? So do you have it on your computer? 
if you found it from internet and download it and install it and now you wish that it works. Start the oct octave. I'll show you a couple of things. Mr. Soon Octavia. Ah, okay. Good. So my octave looks like that. You may have different uh, setup on it. I, I kind of like this kind of setup, although I should probably increase the font size or something like that, which I haven't done. Um, um, yeah, uh, I can rent mine a color so that you can see the text. Uh, but anyways, that's the command window. But anyways, there are also three other windows on the, at the top of each other. So that's the indexing bin. Editor, okay. On editor, you can actually edit your own functions or scripts. So scripts are basically just a piece of code that you can just, you know, paint and uh, run but that it is, or just call it as a script and just run the same code over and over again. Okay. Function is something that has input parameters and output parameters. So quite similar to any, uh, say, programming language function, the function would be similar. Uh, the script is same as in any, say, uh, uh, this, this, oh, ooh, they are used, usually scripts are used on the um, operating system level calls. Uh, the, the commands will you what you want to repeat. Um, and then documentation actually has some help files and such kind of things. Uh, on the left hand side, in my case, user directory which is now basically user and users and my, uh, you might want to put this one somewhere under documents, your current working directory. This is actually, if it's users and your uh, login name on the computer, it means that it's in basically you are then, then running as a super user of your computer, not the, uh, you know, regular user. So put, put, put preferably that kind of, uh, say, working documents under the uh, some documents file or documents directory or that Google Drive if you have you know feel lucky <laughs> okay um, so let me change that one current directory blah, 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 blah. browser where's the documents documents do I have here octave div directory no I don't I can actually oops where's the create new folder and for example octave or something like that there we go Based octave. Ha. Huh. What? Hmm. Oh. Where's the documents? Where did I? Ha. Browse directories, but it didn't. Hm. I can't see what is there. Current directory. Oh. Okay. I got it. Hmm? It goes under users. Okay. 
KP, but where is the, oh, there, there it is, sorry. Sorry, my mistake, it is there, I just didn't see it. Too small font even for me. Okay, so basically try to get your, set the uh, working directory to something under documents. Good, this field here gives, shows the workspace. And this is where you put your commands. For example, I can do some simple calculus on the com mm, command command uh, window. So one plus three equals uns equals three. Okay, some features. So this is the first of all command line driven thing. So whatever you want this one to do, you will have to type it. There's not much things you can click and do anything. So you type the command and the octave actually parses it and does something. So answer equals three. Ans, A-N-S, restores the latest result of whatever you put there. The latest is always on that one. So it means that if I actually do two, two plus three, there now the same variable has a different value. But anyways, this actually can save you day if you have a long line of, you know, what you wanted to calculate and forgot to put the uh, uh, assignment to some variable. So Octave automatically assigns a variable name on to that latest value. Okay, and now we have it. On workspace, we can see one variable Class is double, okay? Class, meaning data type, and more. So basically these are more like classes in the sense of, say, object-oriented language than such simple variables. But the other class is double, so it's double precision floating point. Dimension, okay. Uh, the whole thing works actually uh, such that it, any variable you have is basically an array. Even the scalar values like this answer, it's just number five. The value is five, but the dimension is one by one. So it's one by one matrix with this color. Similar way we can actually uh, do the uh, do some uh, uh, vectors, like let's have a vector A equals, and then there's a bracket. Oh, this is very tiny. Uh, should try to do something about the fonts. Does it have any? Um, da -da -da -da. Let's see if I can find some font. Fonts, fonts, fonts. Yes, better. Okay, from size, Korea new. Is this better? Is this a better font? Okay, Some, somebody nodded, so. <laughs> That's enough for me. <laughs> One person nodded. Okay, so so basically, <clears throat> uh, that's the variable name equals something. So, so similar to any other programming language, except Pascal. Anybody knows Pascal? <laughs> okay, it's an ancient. <laughs> when I was young. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have been young, young you know. 
I can't believe myself. Okay, so so a a uh, something about variables. Never use single letter variable. <laughs> so that is the next bit. It's a a. So name of the vector is a a equals, and then you actually have the bracket like that one, and start typing. Valuables, uh, value, <laughs> valuables, yes, yeah. value like one comma two comma three and so on. If you leave comma out and just put space, that's fine. Okay, so this, but this is more clear to mark comma on the uh, on this 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 to separate these uh, values, and then at the end, end bridge. There. Okay. So this is now a vector one by six. Name is a a, and the values one two three four five six. Okay. That's one uh, one by six matrix. So it's a row vector. There are also other vectors like column vectors. Uh, meaning that how to make the uh, uh, basically the uh, end of line. End of line is semicolon. So C C equals say four semicolon four three uh, some numbers. Don't don't worry about this. Um, what the values are just that okay this is how you make a column vector like that um you all have struggled on matrix calculations right i struggled when i was in your position uh, but you have octave, you don't need to struggle. Since you can actually just simply take these as variables and multiply A times C. That times that one should give me uh, what kind of beast would come out. Is it one by one or six by six? Row times column. So this is actually one by one scalar value. So these numbers are multiplied like that and summed together. MATLAB does it for you. It knows the, uh, or Octave does it for you. It knows the matrix operations. That's nice. Or then the CC times AA would be that kind of matrix. Okay. So matrix calculations done easy. Don't you wish that you knew that during this algebra course? <laughs> All right. Simple matrix calculations. Oh, okay, how, how this one goes, right? Uh, you have the uh, column vector times row vector. This is the uh, first first row value times the first column value. That's the second. Uh, that's the second row value times first column value, and so on, multiplied like that. Okay, so, so it, this is simple matrix algebra. Octave does it for you. Okay, let's do something, say, more interesting. So this is mathematics. It's, it's a kind of curiosity. But... Um, 
Okay, one one of the uh, say standard things to calculate for in any kind of matrix would be to calculate the determinant, right? Determinant that actually defines if you can inverse the matrix or not. I would guess this is not inversible matrix just because. So how to make the determinant? So, yeah, determinant of this matrix CC times AA, well, it's zero, meaning this cannot be inverted. But, and, and then you could also take the diagonal of that matrix then. And all sorts of, whatever you think of mathematical operation to any matrix, you can do it on this environment easily. You just need to uh, need to know what you are doing. Okay. Um, let's go back to the vectors. So this is a little bit off off the off the things, but anyways, just to show that how powerful tool we are talking about now, it makes life easier. Not easy, but easier. Or engineering made easier. Um, I don't know about the real life. I haven't ever tried it. The, um, okay, so now we have a couple of vectors and so on. Uh, so basically, let's go back to this, this kind of vectors, one, two, three, four, five, six. Think of values that you would have from minus 10 to minus, uh, minus 10 to plus 20, and have basically You want to represent a signal, sampled signal on indexes that start from, okay, let's make it something like that. Okay, so minus five to eight. So this is actually sampling index. Remember the sample signals. So x of n equals the same as n times the uh, the time out of the uh, this this analog system, analog signal x. Okay. How to make this kind of say region of interest as index vector n. N n equals to Minus, oh, minus 5, minus 4, minus 3. Uh, that sounds like a stupid way of doing it. Think of a system that you have 1,000 values. <laughs> what is the chance that you will make a mistake somewhere there? Okay. A big one. Uh, another way, if you were writing a program, you would probably use a loop here. A table and a loop. Right. That's fine. But on octave in the uh, language, there's actually quite powerful operator, the uh, colon operator. So you can simply go minus five, colon, eight. Ta-da. Now you have the indexes, sampling indexes. Minus five to eight with the step size of one. Okay. Now we can actually start sampling stuff or make a those fundamental signals. For example, delta. That would be a discrete delta function uh, on this region from minus 5 to 8. Now we have the index. And we know that discrete delta function goes to 1 if n equals to 0, 0 otherwise. 
Right. That's the definition. We can use that one actually to calculate the delta. <clears throat> I call it D. D equals. How about, oh, well, okay. If you are actually calculating this kind of function in, uh, uh, say, a programming environment, you probably would just go and make, create a bunch of zeros and then set the correct value to one, right. Or, yeah, or do a loop and do the testing inside. But again, now this environment is designed for matrix and vector operations, meaning that you can actually make and test if the values here are zero or not. So let's test it. So we have the index vector. We test if it's equal. Okay, now, Make, pay attention, equal, equal, the same as in C language. If you put single equal, it's a certain operation, but equal, equal is testing. If it's same as zero. Okay. That should actually return a Boolean variables. Let's see what does it do. That give all zeros and ones, or it gave me zeros and ones, and yes, it's logical. Okay, not number, but logical, meaning binary value. Um, <clears throat> one, say uh, to make uh, be on the safe side, we should do. Uh, the, the, the type casting of this logical value so that we can actually use it on calculations. That is a good, uh, say, uh, habit because of, for example, on C language. This true and false. What is the value for false? What is the value of false for in C language? Zero. What is the value for true? No. Not only, it's okay. Also two, also 1.25. So in C language, true means non-zero. Yeah, right. This is, it's <laughs> the same. Basically, for that reason, I would actually put here a type casting, meaning force this value to be the same class as the... Uh, other values. So let's see. That happens like this. Double. Okay. And just for fun, actually, I will be uh, adding semicolon at the end. Semicolon at the end suppress this the printout since otherwise we'll be filling the uh, display quite soon. There, okay. Now, DD is double. Now we can do cal calculations easily. <clears throat> Good. Um, and that's actually totally okay values to be plotted. Uh, now I need to find if there is a stem plot since mm, the way that digital signals actually are shown in, say, traditionally is not a simple plot, line plot, but a stem plot, which basically marks the zeros, which are well, circles on on the place where, where the signal goes to zero, and then otherwise it's a stem, like in flower stem. Um, how do I find that one? Maybe I can actually just Google it. Stem plot on octave. Oh, okay, that's nice. So STEM actually is the same as in MATLAB. STEM um, 
index n and the second parameter would be my variable dd let's see if it uh, resembles okay let's see if it does anything yes it does the first time you call the uh, any graphics function it actually might take time since it's initializing the graphic engine and it may take minutes let's see what happens here <laughs> depending on what is the render of what you are using did it work or does it give the uh, okay ah you have this template yes yep that that looks quite the same as in here um i got i got it i got it excellent Yes, you have fixed all that all there. <laughs> okay, so resembles a little bit like that. Uh, one minor detail I would like to point out: never return this kind of ugly pictures to me. <laughs> couple of general rules if you have any plot show all the data do not actually cut the data on the uh, edges so make the frame a bit bigger than your data is then it looks better okay so make the axis a little bit bigger uh, you can actually uh, either edit it from the axis here or then just say axis all right or axis uh, minus six to nine and minus 0 0.1 to 1.1 1 .1. I think that does the trick Ac axis uh, by the way, if you want the previous command, then it's arrow up. Now I just need to find the, uh, where did I put my graphics window? Yep, that's much better. So it shows the picture, more or less. Okay, then of course you need the uh, labels, if you know them. So, for example, X. Hmm. Mm, just a moment. I will. Let me move at least a little bit around. Um, okay, there. X label. Um, either prime or. I think the, that's the prime operator is for the strings, uh, but so I have the index on x axis and then the value on y axis. Ah, y axis, y label. Why? Oh, yeah. Y label, of course. X label, Y label, and the title. Would be um, impulse function. Uh, if you are familiar with the latex command, then you know that that's Greek letter delta. Greek letter and then the uh, this um, what is that backslash and then the text so my final version of my picture is right here hmm. Greek uh, doesn't do anything okay good next step think of it as your 
final picture to show me and return it as a part of your Google Doc. You can save the figure as. Wait a minute. Does it save it always with the PDF? Uh, that is a good question. I want it actually as. Hmm. Let me try to copy. It might actually work. Uh, yeah, so just under edit, there's the copy. And then you go to your template on the correct place, which says insert your figure. Uh, remember, this is not the answer for this <laughs> exercise. And let's try to paste it. Yeah, it's there. See, it just magically goes there. It's It's a... Document, you are. <laughs> Nothing fancy. It's just a Google document. You just copy and paste the uh, image there. That's that's good. Depending on your graphics adapter, though, you might have got different. Um, uh, You might have got different figure option here. If you didn't find the copy under edit, then uh, raise your hand. There is always a way to go around. <laughs> but that should actually work. Just click copy and it magically goes to your buffer and copy paste. Can you do copy paste? Snipping tools. Snipping tools. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Use the uh, zoom. Oh, I I I take Agfa, you know, <laughs> instant picture. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. Ah, that's fancy. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's how you take the. Uh, this kind of figure and put it on on your answer sheet. Otherwise, you know, on your template they are only say write the comments, meaning copy paste. Copy paste the comments what you did to produce all of those stuff. Okay, a um, few things I need to show you though. Okay, so so that's a little bit off the graphics. Um, next, actually, would be to how how to produce a unit step, but with time shift. Um, okay, for example, so that the unit step actually starts from point n equals. Or actually, that would be y n unit step with a time a time uh, delay of three. Negative time step is same as a delay. It happens on the later. All right. So Uh, we can actually use this one as a, say, function. Same way we did that one. We just have a different comparison operation. So, uu3 equals double, double casting, remember, nn minus 3 greater than equal to zero. So this is the safest way of producing that function. 
it is the same as you would compare n n is greater than equal to three. But this actually looks like it would be a exactly that function you are calling it with the this variable. There, and then we can stem it again uh, in, in, and UU3, just to see if it is okay. There, haha, <laughs> it works. Good. So those are the basic functions, and how, that's how you incorporate the AA time delay. Next step would be to start combining stuff like, uh, okay, uh, let me sample a sinusoid function. So how to produce a sampled sinusoid of, well, any, any values there, do, 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 do. maybe like that, or whatever sinusoid I happen to get. Sample, whoops, where did it go? So, sampled sinusoid. Do, 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 do. Y equals amplitude times, so for example, 0 0.5 times sine of 2 times pi times. Ooh, okay, now I don't, the sampling rate here. So think, uh, let's think that one as 0 0.5 times sine, 2 times pi times single frequency times x or n times ts. This would be the uh, sampled sinusoid. That's your T. That's the signal frequency. For example, if we have, uh, what is the AC frequency here? 60? Is it 60 or 50? 60. 50 or 60? 60. 50, 60. <laughs> okay, 60 hertz. Let's pick a say a sample time of one millisecond. How to do this one? Uh, one way. Uh, let me start this one over. TS equals one E minus three. Okay. This recognizes the IEEE -E -E uh, version of floating point numbers. This is one milli. You can imagine the second there. Uh, then we have the uh, signal frequency is 60 hertz. There. And the rest is basically just typing the line. Y equals, hmm, equals to 0.5 times sine 2 times pi times signal frequency times n times ts. There. That's all it all there is. And what does it look like? Did I get anything sensible here? Stem oh, do, 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 do. N N Y Ah. Huh. Looks like sampled sinusoid. Ew. Right. Then there is a question how to combine those values actually. Hmm? 
how to combine these values. For, for example, this, this uh, step function is very powerful tool to start a signal sequence somewhere. I could multiply this sinusoid with this, uh, with this uh, mm -hmm, step function to start the signal actually at that point. How to do that one? Uh, you multiply signals, which is not the same as multiplying vectors. Vector multiplication uh, is matrix operations. Here we actually need uh, kind of tabular or table uh, calculations, meaning uh, cell-wide product. Okay. Or cell by cell product. Ha! Huh. Where did it go? It didn't go anywhere. Well, awesome. yeah, of course. So, cell by cell product. So basically, the uh, this is also called uh, the um, this is basically same as mixer or multiplication, signal multiplication in, uh, if you have the si systems and signals kind of class already have, then you have the uh, mixer which has two inputs and then the output is the product of these two signals. So this is the quite, uh, well, th this is exactly the same cell by cell product, meaning it uh, multiplies the first element of first vector with the first element, the second one, and then sec second element, and third element, fourth, so on. So this is actually mixing signals, or multiplying the signals. And what will they do? Uh, do, 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 do. No, M, for example, M equals to Y, mm -hmm. Y, dot times okay dot in front of any operation will make the operation cell wise operation cell to cell operation signal operation dot times uh uu3 and stem that one n n m m uh, where does it go? There we go. So I actually cut that part out, and now the signal starts from that point. Good. How to add stuff? Well, you can also the same way as well. The, the uh, multiply the add-in. Actually, the cell-wise add is the same as vector add. So no no problem there. We could do a um, something like that. I'll just directly plot it here. And mm plus, for example, that delta function would look something like that. So it, I just added the. Uh, delta function to the beginning. So that's basically the part what you need to do in different order and with some other, say, uh, uh, think of it yourself for the exercise. It, it's, the uh, exercise is quite similar to this. You need, need those up to the sound part. Hmm. Oh, do, 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 do. Audio data. Okay, yes. Good. Let's make some noise. Mm, any questions? Go ahead, ask. Okay. 
Um, let's generate some sounds, some voices and noises. Um, noises. Ah. Voices and noises. Uh, anyone playing any instrument here? Guitar. Anyone playing guitar? Yes, one. You know, I'm playing some other cello, happy chord, <laughs> okay. a flute. Anyone else what is the uh, uh, basic note 8 in frequency? Basic note 400. 440. Someone said 441. It's 440. To 442, something in between, depending which sound frequency oh boy is doing. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, that that's what I heard 15 years ago. Oh boy is the hardest instrument to tune on orchestra. So basically, oh boy is usually kept on the same space as the grand piano, since grand piano is the hardest. Uh, it takes the longest time to tune. So those are kept on the same space so that they are tuned basically on the same note. So when you when they move a, an orchestra to some other place, they first tune the oboe, then they tune the grand piano uh, based on that one and everything else is, you know, done that. But, but for, you know, engineers, 440 is close enough for basic note eight. <laughs> All right, so basic note A, frequency. E is 440 hertz. That's the engineering engineering definition. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, who cares about the oh boy? Uh, it's obnoxious sound in any case. The um, so basically, how to make that note uh, tone and then play it, uh, making it easy. We could actually just plug it into this equation here, but uh, we would have well 14 samples of that one at high sample rate. That doesn't do any good. No, 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 no. We we are not doing it. We are not doing it that way. Ah. Not doing it that way. We first have to define a time. Oh, actually, we need to define the sample rate. High enough sample rate to play that. It's voice. Yeah. Not good. Uh, take a look at your audio s system properties. What are the standard sampling rates? Actually, 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate is excellent. <laughs> or at least 8,000 samples per second, at least. But let's define the sample rate at Fs equals 44.1 kilohertz. So that so-called CD quality uh, sample rate. Okay. And that's good since basically octave that the driver can do the uh, that 8125 and 22050 and that one are the standard sampling rates okay um next how to make indexes for that one okay we do not need Actually, we, we do not need to calculate the indexes. Where do we need it? We need indexes only if we are interested about that kind of uh, graphic representation. What we can do, though, is basically generate indexes and then calculate the uh, sampling time and the sampling. There was on, on the, the slides, there was the, uh, basically the sample time is basically the same as 1 over fs. Let's do that just for fun. T 
Gs equals 1 divided by Fs. So this is actually sample time. Uh, the time between two samples. And now we can generate at the same time as we are doing actually the sinusoid here, we can generate the indexes as a vector. Or we can generate the ty uh, sample times. Tt equals from zero with step size of Ts to one second. Okay, so this is the second way of uh, using the colon operation. If you have one colon, then it's from two with a step size of one. If you have two columns, then it's from with a step size two. Okay, I will just mark a comment here from zero with step size of t is to what? There we go. So now that's a vector which consists of the uh, sample times, which we can directly plug in here. So n times t s. That's done. And now we just need to basically do the uh, sine. So it's worked on the zero point three times sine of two times pi times signal frequency was 440 and then we had the sample times there semicolon is nice thing here now it's if it suppresses the printout otherwise you have would have 44,000 values on your screen you can try it it's actually quite amusing <laughs> All right, there, 0 0.3 times. Yep, that's there. Plotting does not make any sense. How about doing some sound? And with some luck, we can actually do sound like that. S and F S. Sound, signal vector, and the sampling rate. Yeah, somebody got it. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, that was 440 hertz. There's no day. What do you make? Some music? Not, not necessarily. <laughs> okay, now back to the uh, basics. So what kind of hearing you have? Is it linear or is it logarithmic? It is logarithmic. Frequency axis on your hearing is actually logarithmic, meaning actually when you double the frequency, you have the next octave. Same note, but uh, next octave. So, uh, say, uh, let's see, Oops. Uh, not that one. If I want to play little a, I just multiply that by two. Two times. Somebody's faster than me. Wow. <laughs> Oops, no <enough> template. <laughs> oh, sound. Hmm. Ah. S is an F S. And uh, when you multiply it by three, what note is that one? It's not the next octave because next octave would be two to the power of, yeah. So it's four, eight times, 16 times, and so on. That those are the same notes on piano scale. Okay, uh, how about how to make a half note? Now we know how to make a full octave difference. If you can get the same same note but uh, next octave but multiplying it by two or power two po uh, two to the power or something, and we have twelve half notes on octave. 
Okay. That's simple calculus. You should be able to figure it out yourself, actually, but since you will be engineers at some point. So basically, the formula is like that one. That's the number of half notes, and you just multiply the uh, basic frequency by that one. So on piano scale, let's see, how does it go? I still miss one key here, right? Okay, C, D, E, F, G, H, A. Um, okay, that's A here. So to get note D, you get uh, one, two, three half notes to the power of three divided by 12 times the basic notes. Note, okay. If you want F, that is uh, three, four, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six divided by 12 to power of times F zero and so on. So you can get the different notes like that one. Okay, now you can make a small code to decode the notes and turn it into beautiful music, which says boop. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, that's kind of dull sound, right? Uh, there's plenty of ways to make it more interesting. One is make it to pipe organ. Quite easy way to make it a pipe organ is to combine that note with this second harmonic. Okay, that gives actually, it will be the basic tube and the harmonic tube on the front. So basically it should sound a little bit like a pipe organ. Uh, just for fun. <laughs> y, no, not Y. S, okay, that was... That one, let me do another S here. Uh, and I do a little bit of reality here. Not 440 hertz, but 441 hertz. Since basically those pipe organs are never in tune. If they were t t perfectly in tune, they, it would sound a little bit dull. This actually means that it's a little bit off frequency. And when I combine these, okay, it's, it's pipe organ. Now, now, you, you got the idea, right? <laughs> ah, if you want to know more about that one, I could give you another lecture on how to produce music, but that will be too much fun. This is engineering course. It cannot be fun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hmm. Maybe, maybe I should actually concentrate on fun parts of the DSP. But in, anyways, so, so that was a pipe organ. Uh, and that's how you make the music. And well, you can figure it out yourself, the rest. Uh, another thing, what is really missing here is the noise. Natural signals do have noise. How to add artificial noise? Um, let me use that one as my sample here. So my signal sample actually is SS12. Uh, SX uh, is SS plus SS2. Um, and let me just add some noise. Just, you know, arbitrary numbers noise. I don't know how much it is in dB. We can cal calculate later. Or in your case, what you have to do on the exercise, you need to calculate the amplitude of noise which is required in order to produce certain signal-to-noise ratio. 
it requires a little bit of fielding with the, uh, this exponential formula or logarithmic formula of, uh, of the uh, decibels. I can help you on that one tomorrow. Um, okay, so noise. No, no, N-O. Uh, in order to produce some noise, we actually do add some random numbers to each data point. Every single data point will get a random number. For example, like this, rand n size is x. Okay. Rand n returns normally distributed random numbers with zero mean and uh, variance of one. Okay. And that actually, is, the argument is here, this, the uh, vector size, and this produces one sample of random number for each size. If you want to scale this one, you can do it easily. Let's multiply, it, for example, the noise by, just for, in case, for example, 0 0.3 times that one. Oops, where's point? 0 0.3 times there we go that's random numbers and how they look like well noise how does it sound like well remember this this is a sound it's a sound sample it's still sound sample sound and no yeah it sounds like that nofs If it was longer than that, you forgot to put the uh, sampling rate there. Okay, sounds like that. We can combine then these, uh, these just by adding SX with noise. Okay. Now the question is, what is the signal to noise ratio? Single to noise ratio was uh, S and R equals ten times log ten of variance of signal to variance of noise. There we go. There so uh, single to noise ratio equals 10 times log 10 of variance of signal is Sx divided by variance of noise. Okay. Hey, that just can't be about zero. Well, it could be. I usually don't make any mistakes. So, <laughs> so we have about the same amount of noise as we have the uh, signal. Right. That's what it means. Zero dB means about the same. Yeah. About the same volume of signal and noise. Okay. Those were the tricks uh, which should help you basically to survive the first exercise. Um, just one little thing. Now we need to basically, when we have this SX plus NO, somehow save it as a audio file. Now I'm not totally sure how it goes in Octave, since last time I used Octave was one year ago, and this is version well, it was version, at least two version numbers before. Uh, this distribution, let's see. Does it have wave rights? Or does it have audio rights? Oh, okay, I lost my internet, let's see.
No internet. Okay, anyone in, has an internet? Uh, check octave wave fright. Does it exist? Wave fright. Wave fright. Yes, it does exist. Excellent. Oh, we don't have any internet on this region of <laughs> world. <laughs> we are temporarily offline. Okay, uh, uh, let me check the uh, local help. Uh, you can actually have some local help, but if this help is not really good help, it's better to look at uh, uh, the Octave documentation on online. But anyways, there is also this uh, offline help, help wave write, uh, writer. Wave write is a function, yes, excellent. It doesn't do much help, right? Ah, <laughs> oh, boy. Text info was exited abnormally. Okay, no manual index. It might require the uh, online. Right. Okay. Uh, if I remember it correctly, wave, uh, wave, right. The format is such that you give it the file name, uh, foobar dot wave, and then the uh, signal, for example, that SX plus NO, and then sample rate. And with some luck, it actually works. Oh, wow, oops, ah, yeah, my fat with fingers, wave, right. Positive number, uh, is obsolete, okay. Uh, remove from, use something instead. Ah, okay, file name is the last one. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, good, good, good. Uh, data, so basically that only the uh, end of all is wrong, right? SX, oops, NO. Okay, that's the signal, sample rate, and then the... Uh, Oops, well, caps lock. I hate when that happens. Ha, ah, yeah. And now it's on the uh, directory. Fubar.bay. Okay. So basically, next step would be for you to upload this one to your Google Drive, get a link, share it with a link. So let's see. Um, I don't have any internet here. So basically, you just move this one into your Google Drive, share it, make sure that actually it's shared openly to anyone who has the link and then use that link in your answer sheet. Answer sheet would be there, yeah. Okay, so on the last ex exercise here, provide a link to your sound sample actually means that you should insert the link only, not the file. It doesn't do anything if you put the file here. You need to actually uh, kind of manually first move the file somewhere. It can be also some other repository than the uh, Google Drive. It can be actually some sound, the repository or something like that. But anyways, a link that works. Good. Any questions?
uh, maybe more questions will be tomorrow, since tomorrow we will continue at, uh, was it uh, 9.30 or 10 o'clock? 10.30. Okay, 10.30 to 5 p.m. Right, okay, tomorrow. And we actually continue with the exercise. I will leave, let you work on the exercise and, and I go around and laugh at you, haha. <laughs> Ah, uh, no, no, not really. I'm a nice guy. So, tomorrow we'll continue the first exercise. You will start working. If you work it on this evening, then you will have, you know, more relaxed uh, morning tomorrow. And after some, some time with the exercises, I'll go to the next topic. And then we have the uh, exercise again and, and so on. Okay. So that's all for today about the DSP.